So antenatal hydronephrosis is not uncommon. We hear that frequently. Our obstetric colleagues inform us that this scan showed uh, hydronephrosis. Bilateral moderate hydronephrosis in the male baby, we definitely need to rule out posterior urethral valve and an early scan by day two would be advisable. However, looking at the urinary stream is a good guide as well. And if the stream is normal and it was not very significant antenatally, you can wait for two to three days. If the baby is passing urine well and it's a unilateral scan uh, or mild to moderate in a female baby, we can do the scan at three to five days of age or later. We should avoid that in the first two days as there is the dehydration that is seen which you can result in underestimating the size of the hydronephrosis. So uh, this is to show you the normal system, the kidneys, the ureter, the bladder which is not dilated or trabeculated and the normal urethra and uh, you can see the normal pelvic calicial system. Here there is hydronephrosis obviously, there is uh, effacing of the pelvic calicial junction, dilatation of the calyces. The ureters appear dilated, the bladder has uh, dilated thickened walls which are trabeculated. This is due to the force needed to contract to empty. And then you have the dilatation of the proximal urethra with an obstruction. So this is a typical picture we find in posterior urethral valve, which is definitely uh, more common in males. Many of, many of these cases may be having associated oligohydramnias. That's why the prenatal evaluation uh, includes uh, scan at the second trimester which may show more than or equal to 4 millimeter and then you follow it up. If it is unilateral you can repeat at third trimester and if it is more than 7 millimeter as I said we need a postnatal scan after 3 to 7 days if it is moderate or severe after 7 days for mild to moderate. So uh, the definition of uh, mild, moderate and severe varies. Normally 10 to 15 millimeter is taken as moderate and more than 15 is taken as severe. Mild is less than 10 the postnatal scans. Bilateral hydronephrosis, you may have oligohydramnias, which makes it very serious and a risk assessment and multidisciplinary approach is needed. If it is not associated with oligohydramnias, you do a serial antenatal scan every two to six weeks. And then if the oligohydramnias develops again, your management will depend on the gestational age, because if it's a later gestation, you may want to deliver early for the risk of pulmonary hypoplasia. If the oligohydramnias is not there and the kidney dilatation is more than 7, uh, we need to do the postnatal ultrasound again. As I said, if it's a male with distended bladder or moderate severe antenatal hydronephrosis, you do it early. Or uh, if it is milder, you do it later. If there is an associated systemic malformation, you have to provide appropriate counseling as per the malformation. There are so many guidelines for postnatal ultrasound and uh, it's always variable. This is from uh, Indian Journal of Nephrology published in 2013. So this is a reasonable one except for the definition of the uh, 7 to 10 millimeter where many, many of us use up to 12 millimeter and some even up to 15 if there are no other concerns. The SFU grade uh, depends on how the pelvic calicial system uh, effacement is there, what is the dilatation of the pelvis and so on. So if it is a mild hydronephrosis, no intervention is needed. And uh, if there is no hydronephrosis, sorry, no intervention, less than 7 millimeter anterior posterior pelvic diameter. If it is mild without ureteric dilatation, APD 7 to 10 millimeter after third day of scan, ultrasound every three to six months until resolution. Uh, majority in the 10 to 12 millimeter fall in this category as well. That's why most of us include less than 10 as mild, less than 12 as mild. And moderate to severe hydronephrosis where it's more than 10 to 12 uh, or it's mild with ureteric dilatation. We have to do a maturating cystic urethrography with adequate precautions to prevent infection being introduced. If there is no vesicuretric reflex, you do a diuretic renography. No obstruction, you can follow with ultrasound. If there is an obstructed pattern, uh, depends on the differential function and you may need surgery. Uh, most surgeons do not operate immediately, they monitor. Again, if there is vesicuretric reflex, you start antibiotic prophylaxis. Otherwise, you don't really need antibiotic prophylaxis in this category. If there is evidence of lower urinary tract obstruction, obviously a urology referral and review would be